Today we're looking at a pass for the green cube, also known as the IO117. And I'll be showing you what you need as far as software, what you need as far as hardware, and uh, how to make a successful contact and work the world through the satellite. Let's get started. As you can see, there is a pass coming up from Asia. I am right at the edge currently. It is, uh, you can toggle the uh, grid line using the G button. And this is, uh, the software, by the way, is SatPC32, the ISS edition. And this is version 12.10. Additionally, you can toggle the baud rate. And normally it is a 1200 baud. Uh, sometimes the satellite operates at 300 baud. The software, by the way, is by UZ7HO. And this is version... 0.10b. Additionally, the GreenCube terminal software by OZ9AAR is the software that I occasionally use, not always, but most of the time I use for decoding the GreenCube. You can see my grid and my call sign already. And this is a long pass. It is a, a 10 hour, 14, or actually a little longer pass. Uh, I'm going to be editing this down so you don't have to sit here for an hour plus and watch everything. You want to preset your CQ and all your buttons. Uh, in my case, I just uh, send a simple grid and uh, the response. Uh, and here it looks like something is already coming in. And the response is uh, basically just a QSL. And once you get a response back, you send a Roger Roger 73. So the uh, three buttons you need are pretty straightforward, CQ and reply. And I am replying right now. And this is followed once I hear back by a very simple, uh, and let's see if he hears me. Message to me from Alpha Lima 7 India Delta. And looks like you heard me loud and clear. And this is where I send a Roger Roger 73. And as you can see, when you send your transmission up to the satellite, it will echo back and you will see your own signal coming back and you can read it off the screen. If you do not see that, there's a good chance it did not repeat. So try again, but uh, make sure you can hear well before you do that. GreenCube also sends uh, telemetry information and you can see it right here. You can gain some interesting information from it. And this monitors uh, temperature and other uh, things also on the same frequency, which, by the way, is at 435.311, uh, plus or minus Doppler shift. And after I log, I log in Ham Radio Deluxe, so that's off screen. But that's where I log, and I do all the other steps after, like sending up to LOTW. And that's a whole other topic for another video. I do have another video on how to log satellite contacts. I will link it below. If you'd like me to show you how to set all this up, by the way, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to do a second video. In the meantime, let's see what else we can catch. About 10 minutes has passed now. And uh, before I go over the antenna and hardware requirements, let's look and see what we got. So it looks like we have a uh, Russian station, a couple of Japanese stations, looks like three, four. And we got the LA-7. XK, which is uh, Norway, and uh, so there's quite a bit of Europe, uh, European Russia, and uh, Japan showing up in here. A lot of these stations I already have, so I'm not going to bother them and work them again, but at least you got to see what usually comes up in these passes, at least the ones coming from that direction. During different passes, it's not unusual to uh, see a lot of South American stations, and I have also worked Australia and New Zealand uh, on a more southern pass. Since I'm on the West Coast uh, in California, I actually am able to work quite a bit of Australia and New Zealand. However, parts of Europe and, um, and so on are not as easy for me as it would be if you were on the East Coast or Europe. So let's talk about hardware. The antenna requirements are actually a lot easier and simpler to uh, set up than one thinks. You can actually work the satellite with a handheld antenna, given you have enough elements. 
and a clear view of the sky. The uh, setup I use is a uh, M squared uh, antenna with a lot more elements than I actually need, but I do other satellite work too. The only antenna that's actually used is the one with the uh, smaller elements on it, which is the 70 centimeter antenna. And you can easily do this if you're working from home with a Leo pack. Uh, you might have some issues uh, on the uh, beginning and the end of the pass, but other than that, it should be okay. Uh, a lot of people use uh, horizontally uh, polarized um, 70 centimeter antennas, which actually might even work better. And uh, the ones I use are circular polarized, so, uh, but it does the job. The azimuth and elevation are controlled uh, by the uh, set PC32 software and Doppler is also compensated for by the software. And so the only thing I really need to do is uh, make the contacts once you get it all set up and configured. Again, if you would like to see exactly how to do that, let me know below. And while I was talking, looks like a couple of Lithuanian stations decided to join us too. A lot of Europeans have come and gone since I forwarded a little bit. There's 42 minutes left from the pass. And I have tried to call the uh, Swedish station. Uh, as you can see here, I called twice and my uh, report only, re only uh, repeated once on the repeater. And uh, that's not unusual. So if you see that there are um, issues with it repeating, just try again, but give it a little time as sometimes there's a little bit of delay before it repeats your transmission. So I just sent him my report, basically just uh, Charlie Mike 87, California, QSL. Message to me from November 4, Bravo Alpha Alpha. And he responded. So there we are. Um, and I am sending a 7-3. Message to me from November 4, Bravo Alpha Alpha. And he saw me, responded. The uh, sound you hear, by the way, is built into the software. And uh, it's uh, really helpful. So there you go. That was a really simple domestic QSO. Let's talk radios for a second. As you can see here, I'm using an IC9700. It is in USB-D mode. Filter 1 is enabled. So that seems to be the perfect setting for this. And you can see the uh, signal uh, on the waterfall uh, right in the center as the uh, packets are coming in. And I'm at 435.3 uh, megahertz. It's adjusted for uh, Doppler by the software. And uh, basically, this is exactly what you'll see. Now, you can, um, you can set all the uh, different uh, settings uh, here on the radio. Uh, you can adjust the span. Basically, that's 50 kilohertz. You can go uh, really wide on this. Uh, it's an SDR radio, so that's 100 kilohertz, 250. And uh, you can see quite a bit of the spectrum right now. Although it's not that useful for fine tuning, there's 500. And you can go down to 2.5. If I leave it, let's say on five, right now you'll see the incoming packet signals being much wider and uh, maybe easier to tune in. Uh, my preference is a little bit uh, wider, meaning narrower uh, signal on the display and monitoring a little bit more at the time. And there are some uh, longer uh, packet signals coming in. Those are usually telemetry. And you can see the preamp is enabled. I just turned it off. You can see what a difference it makes. I am using an external preamp, by the way. Uh, you, if you uh, recall the antenna photos, you saw the uh, SSB electronics uh, external amplifier on there. I do enable the amplifier externally and I disable it internally in the radio. And here's how you set that preamplifier and uh, automatic gain control is uh, on fast. I have the external preamp turned on. That's the only one I really use. England and Germany have since shown up on the waterfall and let me show you something here. I just called CQ 
And uh, I'm going to do something here. Whoopsie. Sheriff Wyatt has an important message for you. Basically, I just tried to call CQ again, and there is a built-in uh, system where it prevents me or kind of slows me down, rather, from uh, calling CQ too much. And it uh, asks if I'm sure I want to be calling CQ. Basically, it's not polite or not good satellite etiquette to be calling uh, CQ constantly. People see, people watch, and they see you uh, down on the uh, log there uh, as the signals are, as the stations are coming in. So uh, if somebody wants to reach you, sometimes it takes them a couple of minutes even if it's really congested to get through. So they might be trying to respond. So give them some time. If you sent a CQ and you saw your call sign repeated, just stand by and wait to see who responds. Message to me from Lima Uniform for Delta Papa Oscar. Message to me from Lima Uniform for Delta Papa Oscar. Okay, so I'm fast forwarding to the very end. I got about six minutes left. And it looks like I have seen 72 uh, different unique call signs at the moment. Uh, Brazil. Argentina, Mexico just showed up, and in fact, um, I worked the uh, Argentinian station. Uh, this is about the fourth or fifth one I worked so far. Hopefully, this inspired you to get on the IO117, also known as the Green Cube, and hope you enjoyed this video. If you like to see some of my other videos, here are some recommendations. Until next time, this is Lucas, W6AR73.